materials. And the reason I want to start with this is because I want you to know that not only uh, are we going to be doing this live training today, but we continually support you throughout your process with our asynchronous program. Um, and you can also contact us if you have any issues. We are incredibly responsive. So here is our support side. I'm actually going to send you this link. And I and I'm putting in, in the team's chat. If you want to find the team's chat, just go up to the top bar and find that little chat icon and click on it and it will open the chat for this session. If you click on that link, that will take you to our support site. I highly recommend that you uh, bookmark that. OK, now I also show you a very easy way to get to it with your Merlin. But if your Merlin for some reason needs, isn't working and you need to go to the site, here's how you get there. OK, so we're kind of perusing this site. Open it up on your end and kind of look through it. I'm going to show you a few things. You see where it says contact us? Contact us is contact Matt Woodward. OK, so you know that that is going straight to a live, living, breathing human being who's one of the most gifted uh, tech supporters I've ever seen in my life. And he knows how to support you virtually like I've never seen before. And he helps me all the time. So that is if you click contact us, you're getting a human being, this human being. Now, I want you to click on Merlin University. Do you see Merlin University? Click on MU there. This is where we have our asynchronous materials and our certification program. Certification is free. Uh, it's modular. All you have to do is go in, take a module, and if you finish a series of four, you can apply for badges for free. The badges can, the, can go toward credit hours for PD. So if you have a certain amount of PD credit hours you have to get every year, this can go toward that. And a certificate of PD credit will be emailed to you and to your supervisor uh, when you submit your application. So I wanted to show you that. But the first thing I want to show you is this orientation. I like for everyone to take the orientation just because it goes through every feature and it gives a really good overview of how to do it. Not to mention the fact that within a couple of weeks, we are going to have have instructional videos embedded into this orientation where you can see me instructing you how to do it all over again, but it's just skill by skill by skill. So it's not like you have to watch this big long training. You can just go and watch a tiny little snippet that lasts two minutes. OK, that's coming. Those videos are uh, they have just made it out of editing and we're getting ready to um, to, to get those in, in the orientation. But if you click on let's go, or if you click on this picture, it's going to take you to our, our orientation. The orientation does not provide any PD credit hours. It's, per, it's for you to support yourself. Um, but I wanted to kind of show you what's available here. Uh, we have all of our different, uh, we have kind of like our basic usage, how Merlin helps you access, how it helps you navigate, share, manage, and control. Um, we're also going to show you um, like see Merlin in action. This is one of our embedded videos where you can kind of see how Merlin works. So you're welcome to go in and watch that. Um, we also have um, a remote control guide that kind of takes you through every single button. So if you forget how what that button does, you have a very easy way to come in and remind yourself. Um, and then we go we go feature by feature. Oh, I was going to tell you when it says take the module, you click on that. Those are the certification modules I was talking about. So take the module will take you directly to a certification module. Um, this teaches you how to use the push to talk button. This, you know, this teaches you some practice voice commands and tells you kind of how you can start. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to show you that this resource is available to you. You can take it as many times as you want. You can have it open. You can use it. You cannot use it. It is here for your help. Questions about this? OK, so let's go ahead and start. I'm going to um, open my visualizer so we can start looking at the remote control together. So um, hold up your remote control if you have it. And let's there we go. OK, so can you see my remote control on the screen? All right, so we are going to start with uh, this top button right here. You see this orange button right here? I want you to click that orange button and I want you to just start playing around with what you see. OK, you should see some icons pop up on the right hand side of your screen. Do you see that? Yes. yes. OK, so start clicking those. Just click them. See what happens. What comes up for you? Tell me. What do you see? Do you see a question mark? Do you see a compass? Like what are you seeing and what happens when you click? Explore Merlin. 
Yep, so that'll take you direct to our support site. See, that's an easy way to get there too. I gave you the link, you bookmarked it, but if you have your Merlin remote, you can very easily get to our support site right there. All right, what else do you see there? The remote. You see the find my remote, if you click that button, it'll make your remote sing. So if you've lost your remote now, obviously you can't use the remote to click on the, <laughs> the find my remote and you can't open the overlay if you don't have this orange button, right? Well, there's a fix for that. So what you're going to do, and I'm gonna teach you this right now. You're going to go down to your tray. You see this tray right down here, this kind of bottom white bar on my screen. Can you see that? And do you see over here by the time and the date and you see this little up carrot right here? If you click this up carrot and then you go and find this little orange avatar and click on it, it's going to open the overlay. And then you can use your normal mouse to click on that find my remote and your remote will sing. Okay. I don't I don't have that at the bottom. You don't have a tray at the bottom? Hey, hey Matt, why wouldn't she have a tray at the bottom? Does she need to show it? Is it hidden or something? It it definitely could be hidden. Um it's not essential. It's just another way to open it up. Um, at, at the bottom of your screen, do you see any like orange circular icons? I, I do see it. Click on it. Okay. Okay. You can see, see any of them that you're, that you're good. Okay. I clicked on that and then, um, it came up again at the top. And then click that little tiny remote and it will make your remote sing. Perfect. Perfect. Is your remote singing to you? No. So open the overlay by clicking on that little orange ball and then click on the find my remote icon and it should make your remote sing. And this is this is one feature that I'm going to suggest a product that we simplify in such a in some way because you have to find a way to be able to open that overlay without this orange button because if you've lost your remote, obviously you can't use it. So um, that is how you can find your lost remote if you don't have it. Um, and maybe we can have you work offline with Matt and help him get that set up for you because he okay. knows how to fix all that. All right, so we've looked at this first button. Uh, anything else that's popping up for you as you click this button that's interesting that you see? Well, the chat. Merlin chat. So that's one way to access Merlin chat. Perfect. Anything else? Uh, question mark. Question mark. Click on that. That'll take you to instant connection to Matt Woodward. How we help. Okay. How mm -hmm. can we help? Mm -hmm. okay. And then the other one, the last icon there is just account and settings. So it's your account information. All right. So we just learned the Merlin overlay. Very exciting. Now let's continue on. Okay. So do you see these two buttons here? I'm going to show you these two buttons. We've got this push to talk button. So it's a push to talk, and this is an air mouse switch. So let's start with this button right here. Push to talk is essentially like a walkie talkie with your AI. Have you ever used a walkie talkie? Yeah, well, of course you have, right? It's like you're having a walkie talkie with your AI. So when you push the button, Merlin is listening. When you're not pushing the button, Merlin can't hear you. So the button enables Merlin to be able to hear the things that you say. And the way that you know Merlin is listening is when you push the button within like a second or half a second, you should hear a little beep. The beep is telling you, hey, I'm here, I'm listening, and I'm ready for your command. So let's give a little try. Let's try one command right now. What I want you to do is this. You are going to press and hold the push to talk button, you're gonna wait to hear that beep, and then you're gonna say, what's the weather? So it's gonna look like this, okay? I'm gonna press and hold the push to talk button, and I'm going to wait for the beep and say, what's the weather? Now you'll see that when I say, what's the weather, Merlin is going to pop up a weather channel uh, app here on Google. Did that happen for you when you tried it? Or have you not tried it yet? What's the weather? Oh, got it. 
You did your very first voice command. Your very first, certainly not your last. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the visualizer. So that's all. That's all. That's how it works. That's how you give commands. Press and hold, wait for the beep, give your command and release. I like to say that. I like to make a little rap out of it. Press and hold, wait for the beep, give your command and release. <laughs> And I know it seems simple. You got your wrap down. <laughs> right? I've said it enough times. I've got this down. But it seems very simple. However, it is the number one biggest issue I run into with new users is they don't wait for that beep. Okay? So we've got that handled. You know how to do it. Let's move forward. All right. We're just clicking along. Do you see this button right here? This is called the air mouse. This button actually controls your cursor from anywhere in the classroom. So no more having to run up to your computer and bend over and get your mouse. You can control your cursor from anywhere in the classroom. Now this button is an on off switch. You click it once to turn it on and then you can move it around. You click it again to turn it off. That's all it is, an on off switch. Now, if you want to try, let's do it now. Let's click it on, let's press that button, click it on, and now you can see that I am actually controlling my cursor on the screen with my mouse. So I want you to try that now, and then I want you to try deactivating it as well. Did that work for you? No. Okay, so press, so point your remote at your main display. Okay. Now click the button to turn it on and then show how, start moving your mouse and you should be able to see your cursor moving on your main display. Is that working okay. for you? Yes. Good. Now click it again and move your mouse and see that your cursor doesn't move. Right, it stopped. Okay, perfect. So that is all that is. That's your on off switch. Now I want to show you one quick troubleshooting error that will happen. It happens to everyone. So I'm going to show it to you. Let's pretend that you have your cursor on the screen and you've got your remote. And let's say maybe you're pointing your remote not at the cursor. Maybe you activate your air mouse when you're kind of pointing it off in this direction. Now watch this. If the cursor is here and I have the remote pointed here and I turn it on, I am completely misaligned. So right now I'm controlling the cursor over here, but I'm pointed at the wall. That's not going to work, but it's a very easy fix. All you do is turn it off again. Just press that button, point it directly at the cursor, turn it on again, and now you're aligned. That's it. Very, very easy. You want to try that? Cheryl, it's do you not, need? It's not coming on. I mean, um, so point it at your main display. So point it at the computer in front of you. That seems to be what you have delineated as your main display. So it will control the cursor on your main display. If we need to change your main display to the one up above you that I see behind you, we can work with Matt to get that to happen okay, for that, you. That's what it, yeah, it's going off the computer. Yes, so your computer is your main display. So you're going to be able to control your computer today. If you want to control what's happening behind you on that big screen, that big screen needs to be chosen as your main display. If you don't know how to do that, we can help you get that set up. Okay. Okay, but for today, let's just control your main display in front of you. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like you know how to realign a misaligned mouse? Yes. Perfect. OK, this is awesome. You are absolutely doing amazing. OK, now we're going to get to the juicy part of the remote. This is our D pad. Most people have experience with D pads in their TV remotes. OK, television remotes generally have a rewind here and a fast forward here and an enter here. And they they and then maybe this this controls their menus and stuff. Well, we have designed a very, very easy and functional D pad on this remote. And I'm going to teach it to you right now. Each one of these buttons does multiple tasks. OK, 
Okay. The first thing is if you press left and right, when you have multiple tabs open, it's going to go across your tabs. So let's say you have 10 tabs open. You can move between tabs just by pushing back and forth. That seems like a very, very simple thing. However, getting from tab to tab is actually quite important, especially when you have a test open and Canvas open and you've got a YouTube video open, you've got a lesson plan, you've got slides open. Now you can go from tab to tab very, very simply. So left will move you left, right will move you right. Have you had a chance to practice that and did it work for you? Yes, that's working. And it's on the big screen working. Yes, because you probably have it mirrored to match exactly what's happening on the screen in front of you. But if you want to be able to control it, like if you want to be able to stand in the back of the classroom and control your remote up on that main display, we just need to change which one is your main display. That's it. It's just a setting. It takes two seconds. It's very easy. OK, great, great question. So actually, I'm kind of glad that your main display is right in front of you right now because I can still see your face every single time you do something. So I'm OK with it. <laughs> OK, so that is the first thing it does. Now, the next thing it does is this when you are in a video like a YouTube video, this is rewind. This is fast forward and this is center enter. So it acts like the left click on a mouse or the enter button on a keyboard. <coughs> so rewind, fast forward, center, enter. Let's open a YouTube video right now and practice using the, the D-pad as media controls. So Cheryl, what I want you to do is I want you to press and hold the push to talk button, wait for the beep and say, search on YouTube for brain breaks. <coughs> Search on YouTube for brain breaks. Perfect. Now you can see that I have brain breaks here. Now we are going to use our new skill of pressing and turning on that air mouse, and we're going to hover over one of these brain break videos, and we're going to hover on it with our cursor. And we're going to double click that center orange button to select. I'm going to select bunny stomp. Okay, I'm going bunny stomp. So I'm going to double click the big orange button that's center enter and that is going to open that video for me now i'm going to click that center button again and that becomes your pause and play button when you are in a video the center enter button is play pause so i want you to hover your cursor over a video i want you to click i want you to open it up by double clicking with that center enter orange button and open that video. Then I want you to pause the video by hitting the center button again. And you're in an ad right now. So, yeah. <laughs> but try to pause it by hitting that center orange button. You should be able to pause it once you're in a video. Yep. Okay, now I want you to unpause it or play by clicking that center button again and it should start playing. Now pause it again by clicking the center orange button. Okay, perfect. Now I want you to see that you can rewind and fast forward using the left and right on the D-pad. So what you're going to do is you're going to click that left, no, you're gonna click the right side of the D-pad. You're gonna click the right side and you're gonna see that it's going, oh, it actually just took me and it took me across tabs. Sorry, I forgot. We need to go full screen. OK, it's very easy to take this from advertisement mode to full screen mode. All you do is say go full screen. Let's try that. Let's get your video in full screen. OK, let me put it back so I can practice that. OK. Go full screen. Cheryl, you are a natural an actual natural. Okay, so now you're in full screen and you only had to use your voice. Now what I want you to do is press that right and left buttons on the D-pad and jump forward. If you press it once, you'll jump forward 10 seconds. If you press it again, you'll jump forward 10 seconds. If you press the left, you'll jump back 10 seconds. You'll jump back. If you press and hold, it will fast forward for you, okay? You can also say, jump to one minute in the video 
and it will take you to uh, to one minute. Oh, it says I can't do that right now, but I can fast forward one minute. Let's try that voice command. Fast forward one minute. So what happened was I get I gave it a command it didn't like, and so it told me what I can say instead. Fast forward one minute. There you go. You've got it. So That's now you can, Cheryl, I am so freaking happy and proud of you right now. Like my heart is bursting. I'm so happy. And your smile is literally lighting up my day. So here we go. So now we're in full screen and we are playing this video. If you want to turn the volume up and get those kids up and dancing, let's say your kids are giving you attitude. Let's say your kids are driving you nuts. It's because they're bored and they need to move their bodies. So instead of one, two, three, eyes on me and desperately trying to get these crazy children to care, we need to get them up and moving and dancing and get their freaking wiggles out. And then we try to get them to focus back. So that's what I like to do. I like to say, search YouTube for brain breaks or search YouTube for dance videos or search YouTube for study music. And whatever mood I wanna create in my classroom, I give it a soundtrack. So the soundtrack, now you have access to a soundtrack for your day. If your children need to focus and study and be calm, you're going to say, search on YouTube for calming study music. If your students need to be excited and energized, you're gonna say, search on YouTube for dance music. And now all of a sudden you can start directing the energy of your classroom with the music that you choose to incorporate. Movement will happen. Students will feel engaged. They will leave feeling filled. They will leave feeling nurtured. They will leave thinking you're the funnest teacher they've ever had. They say, my classroom is full of music and dance. And Merlin is facilitating that and making it easy for you to do. That In that way, Merlin actually becomes a behavioral management tool because you're preventing behaviors before they even occur because they're happy and excited and joyful. We want joyful kids. Okay, soapbox done. Let's exit full screen. Are you ready? We're gonna press and hold that push to talk button and we're gonna say exit full screen. Oh, I pushed the wrong one. Exit full screen. Oh, Cheryl, you're so talented. I love it. You're amazing. You're a natural. Okay, so now we know that we can use that D-pad as media controls. Um, now I want to show you what else you can do with this D-pad. We're going to go over to my visualizer and I'm going to show you. If you press up and down, you're going to be able to scroll on web pages. So if you have a very long web page that you need to get to the bottom of, no more do you have to go to your computer and scroll with your finger. You can scroll right here with the D-pad from anywhere in the room. So let's go back to that YouTube tab and let's practice scrolling. So here's how you do it. You have to put the cursor on the page on which you want to scroll. So we're going to use that air mouse and we're going to point it at somewhere on the page. I'm just going to put it on the page and then I'm going to turn it off. So you can see my cursor is up on that page. Now I'm going to press down on that D-pad and you can see I am scrolling hands free. OK, so I want you to remember if your cursor has not been placed on the page, scrolling will not work for you. So place that cursor on the page and the, there you go. I can see I can see behind you that you are scrolling. That is perfect. OK, so now you know how to scroll. All right, now let's continue on. Oh, I want to show you now how for accessibility, how you can actually make text and images bigger on your screen with a simple oh. voice command. OK, so let's say we're going to search. Search on YouTube for Nikola Tesla. OK, so we're going to pull up YouTube videos about Nikola Tesla. All right. So maybe you're talking about science. Maybe you have a STEM lesson. OK, so now we've got images about Nikola Tesla. Now let's actually say search on Wikipedia for Nikola Tesla. 
So Wikipedia is going to come up and it's going to pull up his page automatically. And you're going to see, oh, my goodness, this is terrible. The, 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 the text is tiny. The kids can't see anything. This is not going to help us. But because you have Merlin, you can use your voice to zoom. So all we're going to say is zoom in. And I said it like that. I said it with a lot of enunciation because when I don't, it always pops up open a zoom window and it drives me nuts. So I say zoom in really, really annoying, <laughs> but it works for me. So I hope you could see that when I said zoom in, it got bigger. Watch this again. Zoom in. Even bigger. And that makes it easy for you to read. Now check this out. Turn on your air mouse and use it as a pointer. Point and say, we're going to start reading right here where it talks about where he was born and raised. Do you see how I'm using this as a pointer now? So it serves as a pointer as well. Very exciting. Okay, so we have we have kind of talked about Wikipedia, Nikola Tesla. Oh, you're going to practice. I like it. I am. <laughs> I went now let's hear you do Zoom in. <laughs> oh, wait, I have to put the cursor. Exactly. Stop. Oh, you're so good. Zoom in. Did it zoom for you? Try again. Zoom in. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. Yay. Okay. Now let's like, okay, we got in a little bit too close. I'll try this again. Zoom in. Okay, so now we're too big. We're too big. We need to go back. We need to go back. All you do is say zoom out. Zoom out. You got it. You're too good. It's too easy for you. Okay, so let's go back here and let's continue to look at our remote. So now we, let's re, let's review quickly what we've learned. This is your overlay. This is how you access support and training. This is your push to talk. This is your walkie talkie with your AI. This is your cursor and your pointer. It's an on off switch. This scrolls up and down on web pages. This scrolls across tabs. However, if you are in a video, these become your media controls. Rewind, play, pause, and fast forward. Any questions? No. Okay. The next thing, the last thing that these things do is they go, they click forward in, and backward in your slides. So do you use Google Slides? Oh, yes. Okay, so watch this. You're going to love this. Search Google Drive for the writing process. I have a, a writing process uh, Google Slides deck that we're going to pull up and you can see that I was able to say search on search my Google Drive. I told it to go to Google Drive and I told it what I wanted and here it is the writing process. I am hovering over this with my cursor. I've put my air mouse on it. I'm going to double click and I'm going to open it. Watch this. OK, so I just opened my slides. I would love for you to think about, do you have the name of a presentation open or that you know that you could maybe open with your voice? I'll teach you how to do it. Do you know the name of a presentation you might have? Oh my gosh, the, the exact words probably no, but. Um, One word Rob from it. And, so I say Google. So you say this, this is the, this is the thing you say, search. So it's two parts, search where you wanna search, and what you want to search for in there. So on okay. and for. Search on the Google Drive for the writing process. Search on YouTube for brain breaks. Search on Wikipedia for Nikola Tesla. So it's on and for, on and for. And this is dumb. I'm doing this for a purpose because you are going to remember me doing this. You're going to be like, remember when she was teaching me on and for and making a huge fool of herself? That's what we're doing. So on and for. Search on Google Drive for the writing process. Ready? Let's try it. Search on Google Drive for the rock pocket mouse. It says I can't do that, but I could search for Abraham Lincoln. 
Okay, not let's try this. I want you to say this. I just want you to say, open Google Drive. Open Google Drive. Okay. Now I want you to use your new skills of putting your cursor on that page and scrolling. And then I want you to use your new skill of using that center orange button to double click on the presentation you want to open. There you go. I can see you scrolling. Um, Hover your cursor over the presentation you want to open and double click with that center orange button. Okay, so. Um... <laughs> You're doing great. Um... It went down instead of opening what I wanted. OK, so, OK, so I I click the cursor and and stop it, right? Y no. Yeah, so put the cursor on top of the presentation you want and double click that center orange button. OK. That should select it. Double. on page okay and then now it's selected now double click fast because i could see you double click slow so double click fast there you go okay so there's your presentation now you are now in editing mode and you can see on the side of your presentation you can see all those slides right you see yeah. like no, what do you see? I just see my um, the um, oh, graph. you opened you opened a Google Sheets, so I need you to open a Google uh, Slides presentation. Okay, let me go back. Um, you can use your air your navigate. You can navigate back, or you can go back to Google Drive. If it doesn't like that command, just say close go tab. Go to Google Drive. Ooh, look at you figuring things out by yourself. I didn't even have to teach you that. You just figured that one out. Okay, so now let's let's highlight a slides presentation and select it. Okay, how do I get? Oh, use the cursor. Never mind. <laughs> you're you're doing great. This is a technical skill that will feel very normal to you after just a few few uses. This will be very easy for you. So it did something again. Um, okay. So when I click on it, I click on it and stop the cursor, right? Don't stop the cursor. Hover the cursor and double click fast. There Yay! we go. Yay! Okay, you got it. So now you have opened a Google Slides presentation using the remote and your voice. Um, it looks like it might be taking a little bit of time to load. Or is it asking for permission? No, I it's. Don't know. it's it's up. OK, all right. So here is what we have in front of us. We have the editing pane on the left and we have the presentation pane on the right. This is, this is a Cami. So let me find one that's in Google Drive. This Google place. Slides, Google Slides. So Merlin is we are programming programming it to work with. We can't do that right now. Um, OK, so let me help you. Let me help okay. you. Say um, close tab. Close tab. Okay. Say close tab. This is how you just smash start over again. Close tab. Ah. OK, now with this close one with tab. the graph, you can close tab. Yeah, we're just going to smash clear it all. OK, so go and find Google Slides. Google Slides, it's got that yellow icon. We Merlin is still being programmed to control a lot of other types of media and, and platforms, but right now our main control is with Google. So Google Slides, not Camtasia yet. Okay, now I got it. <laughs> Yay, okay, we've got it. Okay, so we see on the side, we have the editing pane, and then we have the presentation window, correct? Now right. you can hover your cursor over this and you can actually hold press and hold that 
that orange center button I'm pressing and holding. And because of that, I'm able to scroll through the editing part. So you can try to do that by. Say that again. Yeah, so I'm actually able to scroll on these. Can you see how I'm moving my editing pane back and forth? I am doing that by pressing and holding that orange button while my cursor is over that slider. And then that allows me to move the editing pane. So, oh, oh, I moved my slide. Oh, there you, you, you grabbed a slide. See, you're figuring it out. You're figuring it out. This is all part of the process, very normal. This is something you may never need to use, but I did want to show you you have that capability. Now. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So I want to be able to move up and down, but I moved the slide. Can I just move? How do you I move can. up and down? So do you, can you look? I want you to look at my screen right now. Okay. okay. I want you to watch me. I've got my remote and I'm kind of hovering on this slider. When I, when I hover over the slider, it changes color. Do you see that? That means I can control it. Once it's gray, I can control it. Okay, so I'm hovering. I got a live air mouse. I'm hovering on that scroll and I'm going to press the center orange button, that big orange button, and I'm just going to drag up and down, up and down. That's it, up and down. And there we go. You can control that edit pane that way. Can you do it one more time? Because Sure, something. you're fine. So I am taking my air mouse. I turned my air mouse on. I'm, I'm controlling my air mouse right now like this. I'm going to hover it right here on this gray slider. You see this gray slider? Let's yeah. make it bigger. Let's make this bigger. Zoom in. OK, we're going to make it a little bigger so I can show you. So you see this slider right here? You see that? Yeah. OK, if that oh, no, is, okay, if this slider is gray, if it's white, you can't control it. If it's gray, you can control it. Then okay. once you have it hovered and it's gray, press and hold the orange center button, that big orange center button, and you can drag it up and down simply by moving your okay. mouse up and down. Yay, okay. did, you, did you do it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Cheryl, you're so good. These are technical yeah. skills. <laughs> this takes a lot of, of actual, like real technical, ability to, to figure this out and you're doing great. I'm really proud of you. Okay, so now I've shown you how you can move through the editing pane. Now I want to show you how you can go full screen. So all you do is say go full screen. Full, go screen. full screen. That's going to put you into presentation mode. Presentation mode is going to allow you to play your videos that you've embedded and click on your links. And you can use the D-pad to go back and forward through slides just like this. So I'm going through the slides. I've got a video embedded here. I can control videos using the media controls. So all I do is press that center orange button and it will play this video. OK, I just I just pressed. The center orange button to play the video, OK? Now I'm going to move through my slides just like this. See, I'm able to move slide to slide simply by pressing left and right on the D-pad. Questions? No, it's working. OK. Uh, the only thing is I'd like to find a video that's embedded somewhere. Because I tried that yesterday, and I had to go back to my computer. Yeah. Um, if you embed the video into your Google Slides, once you go to that slide, you can play the video by using that center orange button, the play pause. OK, now when you're done with this and you want to get out of full screen, what do you think you would say? Um, <laughs> do you remember when we got out of full screen for YouTube videos? Close, close. Oh, you're close. You're close, close, close. All you do is say exit full screen. Oh, and exit full so screen is going to take you back to that editing mode. Exit full screen. Oh, Cheryl, you're so good. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the visualizer. I'm using my D-pad to scroll tabs. 
We're going to go back to the visualizer and we're going to remember. Overlay, push to talk, air mouse, D pad, scroll up, scroll down, rewind, fast forward, play pause, move across tabs and control slides. All right. All of this is in the orientation that I showed you at the very beginning. OK, all right. So now that we have finished with this top part of the remote, we're actually going to come down and we're going to learn the rest of the buttons and then we're done because this part's fast. We just did the hard part. Hard parts done. Now we just get to do the easy stuff. OK, this button right here is the back button. Do not push this button right now. If you push this button, it is going to escape you from wherever you're at. This is an escape key. It's mapped to the escape key on your keyboard. So anytime you want to escape something or go back, you press the back button. Please don't practice it. <laughs> it has ruined many a training. <laughs> so don't press this one, but this is escape. All right. Now we're going to go to this icon. You've seen this icon once before today. Where have you seen this? You remember? Chat up, up top, right? It, this icon was in the overlay. So you can access Merlin chat from the overlay. You can also access Merlin chat by clicking right here. Let's learn about Merlin chat. Merlin chat is where education is really starting to change because Merlin chat allows you to directly speak with an educational specific chat bot that is normed, that is a private, that is safe, that is secure, and that is designed specifically for K-12 classrooms and is not even programmed with dangerous information. It's not even programmed. It can't answer. It's not possible because it's not programmed how to create a Molotov cocktail. It doesn't know. So now you know that when you ask questions, if it's a question that's been deemed unsafe, or uh, inappropriate, the, the chatbot's gonna be able to come back and say, I'm sorry, I don't have that information. If you're struggling and need extra assistance, please contact your school counselor, please talk to a trusted adult, please talk to your teacher, and we'll guide the students depending on the question and how how uh, what kind of contact the context is in there. But let's click on this button right here and let's open Merlin chat, okay? Let's look at Merlin chat you're going to have a brand new fresh Merlin chat popping up for you. When you click that button, what do you see? Do you see something like this? I do. OK, so this is that is one quick way to open Merlin chat. Now, this is how you mute and unmute Merlin right here. The little mute button over here. And wait, this wait a minute. is. I've, I've covered my that screen covered you. So let me move it. I'm thinking to another screen. I don't know how to get this. You don't need to see screen. you don't need to see me right now. You don't need to see me. The only thing you need to see is Merlin chat because I'm going to talk you through it. So you got me in your ear. That's fine. If this I'm chat one. Oh, OK, OK. All right. So this is Merlin chat. If you click right here where it has that speaker with the X and you click on it, that's going to make it so that Merlin reads for you. Now, you can decide as a professional if this is something that you want or something that you don't want. I'll talk about the pros and cons. Where, where is that again? Because Right here, right here on this kind of purple tab here. If you see this button right here in the, the very, very bottom button, this mutes and unmutes Merlin. Oh, right there. Okay. And how do I do? I click on it. You just click on it. You can use your air mouse to click on it. Mm hmm. Yep. No. Wait. And then how do I mute it? It's it's not. If you click it once, it will mute it. If you click it again, if it has an X beside it, that means it's not going to speak to you. If it no, has it the little lines, it means it will read for you. It doesn't have. It's just. Um, what do you what do you see? I see that screen, um, but it's not doing anything. OK, let's well, actually, the cursor did stop when I clicked it. So it's on there, but. Am I supposed to double click to make it the mute or 
Yeah, so you're just going to hover your cursor right there on that little tiny speaker with the X by it, and you're going to click on it once, and it will unmute it. Click on it again, and it will remute it. I'm clicking with the cursor, or with yeah, with with the cursor. So hover your cursor, hover your air mouse cursor over that little icon. Or why don't why don't you watch me? Watch me for a second. Okay. So we're just gonna close this out. We're gonna start from scratch. So we're gonna click on this button right here. This is Merlin chat. So I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna pop up the chat. So let's just get right. to that point. Don't do anything else. Let's just get to that point. Okay. Okay, so what do you see? So mine has the same bar at the side, but my I don't have a white screen. It says, let's chat. Yeah, that's perfect. That's fine. Okay. But you do have that purple bar along the side? Yes. Do you see those two icons in the very bottom? One is like a screen with a star, and then one yes. is a speaker with an X? I do. If you click the speaker with the X, that will unmute Merlin. Do I, am I clicking it once or? Just one time. Click it one time. It, and what will happen is the X will go click, away. Am I clicking it with the cursor? Uh-huh, yeah, hover button. the cursor and then use the center orange button. Oh, the center. Okay. The center orange button, center, enter, or select. So hover the cursor and then click the center orange button to unmute. But you have to hover over that icon. Yeah, it's not. Okay, let's use your conventional mouse. I want you to okay. grab your normal mouse. And just uh -huh. like you know how to do, I'm using my normal mouse right now. I'm gonna hover over this icon. I'm gonna click it once. Try that. Yeah. It's not doing anything either. So I'm Okay. Um let's let's just let's work with Matt Woodward on the side and we'll figure out your your mute. I okay. I think I don't I think I don't have Merlin chat because I've drug it from the other screen. So I'm gonna ask it to bring up Merlin chat. Yeah, try that, saying open Merlin chat. Open. Open Merlin chat. Try saying open Khan Academy. No. no. So, OK, so let's back up really quick. All you need to do to open Merlin chat is to press the Merlin chat button on the remote. That's it. That will open it for you. Click on that. It's going to pop open Merlin chat. Yeah, it popped open. Okay. Okay. So now if you want to unmute, you can use your conventional mouse to click on that little icon, or you can use your air mouse if you feel like you're ready. No, it's not doing anything. Okay. Let's, wor let's work on the side and make sure we can figure that out. But if okay. you're able to unmute your, um, your, device, your Merlin chat, then you can have Merlin read to you. The reason I like that is because if you need an extra set of hands and maybe you need Merlin to read it out loud, maybe you're doing group work or something, Merlin can take that over. However, pedagogically, I don't recommend it. I think you should read to your students or you should have your students read to you or you should have a student read to the class. So that's my preference. The the uh, the it, 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 it exists for a reason, but pedagogically, it's not very sound. So use it if you need it, but not as a as a rule. One thing on here, it says I understand there's like a box here that says I understand my responsibilities under FERPA and uh, COPPA. Um, mm -hmm. Is that stopping something because I need to do that? Yeah, you can um, go ahead and select that that you understand. Oh, it, 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 okay. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Okay. So good click job. that and then move the arrow forward. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk to Merlin chat. Okay. We just got through opening Merlin chat. Now we're going to talk to Merlin chat. I am going to ask Merlin chat a question, and this is how this would work. This is the context in which this would happen. Let's say you're teaching a lesson about dolphins and your student 
asks you a random question that you have no clue what the answer is. Let's say your student says, how do dolphins sleep? Because they're mammals and they have to breathe every 15 minutes or they'll die. So how does a dolphin get enough sleep? And you go, I don't know. I have no idea. And so in your mind, you think, oh no, I don't know how to answer this question. So there's different ways you can respond. You can say, stay on topic, please which is what lots of teachers will do. Or you can say, you know what? I don't really know the answer to that question. Let's let's look it up after class. I, you know, we, we need to stay focused. Or you could say, stay focused on the lesson, which I've heard many times. And so we, we kind of punish these kids for these authentic, engaged experiences where they want to talk and they want to know. And I've seen it happen time and time again. It's very sad. However, now you could say, I don't know. Let's ask Merlin. So watch this. How do dolphins sleep? And we're going to have an educationally specific programmed chatbot for K-12 do a generative AI response similar to ChatGPT. So it will start reading it, the answer to you if you have that icon selected. If not, you can say, we're just going to read this as a class, or you can read it, or they can read it however you want. So now you'll see that we have the answer generated by Generative AI. We are an AI company. We built this chatbot. This is what we do. We are an AI company. So we are not getting this from anyone else. This is from our company. So um, we and we have designed it. So now you can use your air mouse to hover over some of these pictures and you can make them bigger. OK, so what this picture is showing is that half that they sleep unihemispherically. We just learned that from generative AI. They they shut down one half of their brain and the other half stays awake to keep them breathing. And then they shut down the other half of their brain and then the other half stays awake to keep them breathing. That's how dolphins sleep. All of a sudden we have answered this authentic question and the kids are excited. We've got pictures pulled up and we have this whole moment. So I would like for you to try to ask Merlin Chat a question that you don't know the answer to. How do dolphins sleep? There we go. I don't know the answer. Oh, if you don't know the answer. Merlin, how do dolphins sleep? Dolphins sleep differently than a person. They have two sides of their brain, which they use to sleep. One side sleeps, while the other side stays awake. Dolphins do things while asleep. Dolphins sleep differently than humans. They have All right. two sides of so brain. you can turn they off sleep. that reading by One clicking on that mute button on the side. Awake. That's why I wanted to teach you that mute button, that mute button, the speaker with the X next to it. If you have an X next to it, it will mute her talking. So I, I could hear that she was talking, which means that you did figure out how to unmute it. I know that you did because I wouldn't have been able to hear it if you hadn't. So I can tell you right now that your mute function is functional. We just need to make sure you understand it <laughs> because you are doing it. I never got a screen or anything. I only got just the sound. You only got the sound. Um, so I want you to look up on the back. I can see Merlin chat on your, I can see it on your other display. Like if you look behind you, I can see it up there. So I think what happened is you moved it from your main display. So put Merlin chat back on your main display. Drag it back over. Drag it over so it's covering me. Okay. And then. Okay. Okay. And what do you see? Um, I, I still don't see it X by it. <laughs> oh, that's but, fine. Uh, we won't worry about that. But if you need okay. to mute it, all you have to do is click this icon right here. You don't have to see an X, but this icon right here will mute her speaking and you don't have to listen to her speak. Okay. What, I, you mean the mute? This yeah. One? 
Yeah, on that on that sidebar, that orange side, or excuse me, the purple and kind of green sidebar in your own chat. Mine's not working. Okay. Um, well, let's see if we can troubleshoot that. No, not yet. There. Okay. So we're going to say, okay. Um, I'm going to open up this link right here, and it shows you that this side of the dolphin is sleeping right now because this side, the eyes are closed, uh, and that means that this hemisphere of the brain is asleep. So guess what? Dolphin sleep with one eye open, youtube.com. I'm going to click right here on this link, and it's going to take me to a YouTube video where this image was taken. Now let's say, okay, thank you for asking this question. That was such a great question. Hold on. However, we don't have time to cover this right now, but I still want you to watch this video. All you have to do is say, send to Google Classroom or share with, I think it's share with Google Classroom. It's share with Google Classroom. And then what you do is you hover your mouse on the classroom that it, it will pull up all the classes you have. You might have to give it permissions the first time. You're gonna click on the one that you wanna share with and that will send it directly to your Google Classroom feed. So and you can see it. Uh -huh. Wait, I have to be on the other page to do that. Yeah, so you have to click on you go to the you go to Merlin chat. So we're going to get Merlin chat by pressing the Merlin chat button. Here is the the image. We hovered on this image and we selected it. Then we went I'm down not, here to youtube.com. I'm, I'm not on your page. Um, it took me somewhere. Whatever I said. <laughs> That's fine. Assigning to Google. Oh yeah, you'll have to give it permission. So go ahead and sign in. And once you sign in once, you won't have to sign in again. Okay. Move in mind once access, select all. Mm -hmm, yep. Yeah, I'm glad you're going through it for the first time because anybody who's doing this for the first time will have to give Google permissions. Okay. So that's, okay, so once you've given permissions, now you can go back to Merlin chat by hitting the Merlin chat button. It'll pull back up your chat, push the chat button. Okay. Now I want you to select one of those pictures and open it up by using the center okay. orange button. It's already open. Now, do you see the links on the bottom where it says Bing image search on the left and then it has a link in the corner? Right. Click yes. on the link in the right corner. Click on the link in the right corner. Okay. That's going to pull up the source for that image. Now, let's say you're like, okay, I, I really love that we're going down this. I love that we're exploring how dolphins sleep. However, we do need to get back to our, our regularly scheduled programming, but I don't want to forget this. I don't want to lose this because this was so exciting. Let's share with Google Classroom. So you're going to say share with Google Classroom. Once you're on the link you want to share, you can share videos, web pages, whatever. You can share anything that's a link with Google Classroom. So now I want you to say share with, share with Google, Google Classroom. Classroom. Now on the right, it's gonna pull up all your different classes. Hover your cursor on the class you want to share with and use the center Open button. Open Google Classroom. It said it couldn't do that. Um, but now it's opening the classes, okay. And okay. I have to go, that's my uh, bell for- Okay, well, good news is we're, we are very much almost completely done. So if you, to go back and let, the rest of this is just buttons, okay? okay. So go back into the orientation that I showed you and learn about the mission control button. The mission control button just opens all of your windows and shows you this is volume. This is how you give us feedback if, if you like our responses on Merlin chat. And these are pre-programmed buttons that it, you can push and you can see what they do. Everything is in the orientation, so you can go back and watch that. Cheryl, you've been amazing today. I'm impressed with you. I wish I could meet you in person and give you a giant hug. You are a trooper. You, um, you are amazing. I cannot believe how far you came and how fast you learned. Absolutely impressive. I haven't seen this. I haven't seen someone pick it up as quickly as this in, in, in quite a while. So nice job. Awesome work. You're incredible. Your team is incredibly supportive. Thanks for coming in. Love those kids. If you need Thank us, reach you. out to Rima or me. Have a beautiful day. All right.